almost said one minute. <laughs> So, so, okay, so, I, I think we have to maybe a bit discuss, wrap up what was yesterday, or I don't know if it was all clear. So th there are things which after the lecture I discussed with some people, so it might be good to, to get back. So, but okay, to start with, okay, so what did we, did we discuss yesterday? Essentially, there were only, I think, two main points. One was this, uh, what we call the apps effect. Is it readable like this? I don't know who was, someone was on top of it. Anyway, apps effect, which was the, the time scale, the, the dependence of cross correlations on the time scale on which you measure, uh, measure your changes. So uh, I think, I guess it was a simple concept. We discussed a bit the reason for this and the reason for its time scale being, uh, characteristic time scale doesn't, not, not changing with the, the frequency of the market. I, I hope this was clear and it's in the slide. I mean, no, I think there was nothing new in this point, and there were okay. We started to get to this um, to 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 discuss new models a bit, so some more economic style models, which we actually we will stop. We'll discuss a bit more today, but then we won't have this style, style of models anymore. And there was one model which we called uh, Kai after a person, and so so I wanted to discuss two things about this. So one is that uh, okay one. Just, just getting back because I had the feeling that maybe what is this market maker exactly? These notions weren't completely clear. Even if it, so, we discussed this on the you know, I think in the first lecture, but I, now things should be cleaner, clearer. So to 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 get back to a figure that we take often, we look at. So, so to understand again, in a traditional picture of a market. So let's say this, this is a market. There are, peop there are two types of orders that can be posted. People who are patient and put their orders in a place. They say, I want to buy at this price. I'm waiting for someone to, to trade with me. And there are pa people who are impatient, who we sell this. We say they sell market orders. They say, OK, I want to buy now at the best price. Of course, they can see what's the best. They might also decide they don't want to trade, but they, are not, they don't want to, 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 to wait in a queue. So in a traditional picture, OK, another, so what, another way to say that, so these are limit orders, those are market orders. Another way to say these are providing liquidity, and the others are taking liquidity. It's just a question of language. Liquidity is, we defined it in several ways. We, we can define it several ways, but I think it's sort of clear what they're saying. So in a traditional picture, which is not of today, but let's say until the 80s, the way markets worked, it was people who could place liquidity place limit orders were special people these are were called specialists or market makers so it's simply there were two type of people those who were somehow designated by the market to place limit orders uh, and those uh, and others who could go to the market and trade uh, with market orders okay and so the thing to 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 realize from this is it's, it's a very simple claim is that those people who, who stay so if you put a limit order in the market of course you might get a good price so these people are wanting to sell. They can sell at a price higher than if somebody trades immediately, he will say sell at this price against the trade there. So putting liquidity in the market may allows you to get a good price. But of course, the moment when you are going to execute is not chosen by you. You're there waiting, and you're executing if someone comes to trade with you, which means that, OK, you can expect that since you're there, typically just waiting, you don't have some big information about 
or you, you might have information. But if you do not have not much information, what, what happens is that, sure, you want to sell at a good price, but the moment when you trade is when someone else thinks that this is a good price for him in the opposite direction. So this is what we call probably adverse selection. So this might be a very conditional moment when actually the price will move even further up. You, 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 you sell here, you think it's good because you didn't use this price, but actually the price much later comes up here, or uh, pretty soon comes up here, then it wasn't a good one. So, so the idea of all these models is that you can place limit orders, you can get better prices, but you risk some adverse selection. And in, okay, in practice, in these designated market makers in this market, what can of course they do is they, can, they put orders on both sides, so even if they don't have any information, they don't want to buy or sell, they just want to be providing liquidity there for you. They are giving you a service. But on each trade, they are going to gain. They are going to sell here and buy here. They are going to gain the difference. Or if, then if they have to get out of the position, then they do two trades and they get, so on average, they will gain half of this, which is great, which is, uh, uh, which is a good thing to gain on, but at the same time, as I said, they have the risk of, 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 uh, of being, the, the moment when they trade is selected uh, in adverse to them. So this is the traditional picture. So this is what we call market makers are people who provide liquidity, and typically we think about people providing liquidity on the two sides of the limit or the book. The way, the way markets function today is slightly different, but the idea is the same. Anyone can go to the market and place liquidity here or on both sides at the same time in most of the markets, in the big electronic markets, but it doesn't change the picture that still you're there, you might be, the, the moment when people trade with you is the moment when they want, so they choose it, so it might be better for them than for you, okay? And so the first, uh, what we wanted to discuss, so uh, I just wrote up Kyle here, but so what, what this first type of Kyle model, uh, uh, what, what we try to discuss in these type of models is, okay, how can, a market maker in the situation calculate the, the price to trade at in a way to, to, to minimize, so I mean, probably, oh, he wants to gain, but on average probably he won't be able, but he, he wants to get the best price for him, not to lose at least. So this is the idea. Uh, and, uh, and so in this first Kyle model, so, so, so there were some calculations, we'll, I mean, it's some simple model, but the thing that we understood, I mean, the, the, the message was that the market maker is, is changing his price accordingly to the volume that he sees. With some, we had some lambda, or I don't know how we wrote it. I think it was like, so he has a price, which is the original price plus, so this is the volume that he sees overall, and this is the, his, his, his uh, susceptibility to, to, to this volume, so how much it changes his price. And what we saw is that, that, uh, that, uh, that for the market maker, lambda grows with, uh, with the amount of information of others, which is okay, makes sense, I think, but I mean, let, let, tell me if, if things don't make sense for you. And, uh, and the delta will decrease with, uh, well, I would say noise traders. So all, the, all those who are there trading, you will gain what you gain, but you won't lose anything on them. Yes? I would like to understand what the, what's the meaning of this lambda. Does it have to do with how much risk the market maker is? Between? Lambda has to say, so what it says is that, okay, I'm in the market, the mar price now is 100. And I see that you all want to come and buy from me. So I have to decide at what price uh, I'm selling to you. So I might say, okay, if everyone wants to buy, then surely there is something, you know something more than me. So I say, okay, I won't sell you at 100 because probably you're buying price will go up. I will only sell you at 110. So this, uh, okay, in this language, you have to risk the things, but, but lambda will be the value to get from 100 to 110 given your volume. At the same time, if you come here and on average, you want to buy the same as you want to sell, so half of you want to buy, half you want to sell. I might not be afraid. I still want might change my price with, uh, to a certain degree, but I won't be that much afraid. So, so where this, where, where the way the lambda is calculated, the idea was that he wants to, he wants to have the expectation of, uh, of the final price. So, so it, it was this, he, he said, that, okay, uh, he sees uh, delta V, um, 
and he sets. Uh, so essentially, it's this what he's doing. He wants to set his price in a way that 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 uh, in expectation you will get um, the the final price that people has has have uh, as information, right? I don't know if it's uh, it's sort of uh, clear. Yes, uh, there was a question there <laughs> ten, ten minutes ago. So, no, market makers place limit orders. All these you see here, so those who are waiting are market makers. They are providing liquidity to, to both sides. Typically, the idea is in the language of market maker, they don't have a view of what the market will do. They just, it's a service they are providing. But of course. Waiting, Sorry? Yes. The market maker is waiting in, in a traditional pictures. And it's uh, some pe people, the uh, market maker is waiting. Let's say it's only him and he posts these two orders. And any of you can come and trade against him. But all of you, if you all come and trade, want to buy from him, he will push this price upward. Okay. Sorry, which price he sets? He sets the price of one of the columns. There are so many. Yeah, so that's why I said this. This picture would be a more modern world where anyone can put. But he could decide that he puts all these orders here. Said, yeah, I'm ready to sell two to you at this price, but afterwards it will be this. So he could do it everywhere. Or there could be several of these market makers having different models for lambda. And they one puts here, one puts there. So, but you could also imagine this picture that forget everything which is outside the first, and it's, uh, they just say one at this price, I sell at this price, I buy. Yes. Exactly. Is an intermediary between. Uh, Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, exactly. So traditionally, this was a service. The market somehow gave the. So I gave you the opportunity to come. You will gain the difference here always, but you have to give this service. Okay. And um, okay. So so just to finish up, Kyle, and uh, say something about the market maker more. So there are those, these two things which sort of make sense. So if there are more, if there are, uh, yeah, if there are, okay. Amount of if, if the amount of noise traders so on whom you can make money grows, then you do you you, you can relax your uh, your lambda, and if instead the amount of information of those people who gain on you increases, you have to be you have to protect yourself more, and uh, and similarly, okay, just to, to finish up, for for this other person who who was informed, who we called Alice. It's uh, uh, what, what, what we said is that, that his gain, or her gain, so, so the expectation of her, her overall gain, which we defined, we, 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 again, uh, grows, is, grows with uh, SS, with the amount of noise traders. So this is, which we call it actually liquidity. So all those people who are trading, so, 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 so the amount of noise traders in this type of models is good for both of them, for the market maker because he can gain on them, for the informed trader because she can hide among them. Okay, okay so this, this was, uh, was, the, was the model from, uh, from yesterday. And... Uh, Yes, and uh, we. Sorry? If lambda is negative? Yes. But, okay, lambda. If it's a negative, meaning which can be possible when the noise is quite high, mean number of the noise traders are quite. So, okay, but, but the way. Lambda is set is via the 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 the, the expected uh, the expected uh, break-even condition. So lambda is set by the market maker. So it will 
indeed, if there is a huge noise, may, it can happen that that the informed trader wants to buy. So here, her Q, which we defined yesterday, is positive. But on a, but for a noise reasons, actually, this delta V is negative, and the market makes so. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the noise, uh, sure, it can happen, it, and it can happen that it's in the other direction and she gains a lot. Um, yes. So, so okay. So this is the yes. Yeah, so we saw it, uh, it, it was yesterday, uh, okay, okay. It, it, it was, what we got yesterday is that this thing here is, is the, it was something like this, I think, to, to up to a constant, I think, uh, maybe one half of this, whatever. So, and the, 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 and the amount of noise traders is, 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 is contained in this, so this is the, okay? Okay, so that is uh, to, to, to wrap up on, on a bit of what, so what is this, uh, what we call market making. And okay, so just uh, to, to understand better, so historically there was one designated person to trade here, so he could do whatever he wanted, right? He could put, a very, put this very high up here, this very low there, and then he gains a lot on, this, on each trade. He, it's, a, it's a money machine. If there are Several people who are, so today when, when, when anyone can do this, so there is a competition, of course, what you expect is, sure, you can put your quotes very far away, but there will be someone else who puts closer and then it will be him who trades in the market. So it's, it's much more competitive and much, much harder to make money on this, but okay, this is not really more. So, so we'll discuss another, uh, another, uh, another model about this. Um, which is called, uh, okay, which, we, which is called, uh, because, okay, w w what we had in this kind of model, actually, I'm discussing all these different prices, right? the price which you sell and buy, but he had only one price set. There was only one person, or, I mean, there was only an overall volume that, 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 uh, that he saw, and he said, okay, I set one price to trade, uh, to trade with all of you. So there is another model that I want to discuss, which has similar ideas, but actually it's more realistic. It's called Gloston. Milgram, these are two people. And it's roughly from the same period as Kyla, even from the mid-80s, the model. So which exactly is, the, is about, uh, is about the, the existence of the, of the bid-ask spread. So it's okay, the language, right? Bid-ask spread is understood. It's bit, this S here. So it's, it's to, 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 to show the existence, okay? And, 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 and the setup is somewhat similar, but, but we are, it's not that we have one informed, one uninformed trader, but it, there is a set of all these. When I say uninformed and noise, it's synonyms, okay? So, so there, are, is a, there is a set of informed and uninformed. I don't know how many. And they all come to trade with one market maker, so that's, that's, that's a similar setup. <laughs> MM stands for market maker, and 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 okay, so we, it's a more general. So so everyone who wants to to trade the, all these these uh, informed and uninformed traders have some PI. How do I call it? Uh, PI hat of valuations. So, so there is a P zero, of course, in, in the same manner as in the car. There is a P zero now. And there is a final price that they are trying to predict, so which was, uh, which was called this, this PF. And each of them has, has an idea of what will, be, what will this be. They, they have this valuation of PF. Okay? They have all these ideas. Different. And of course, okay, what, what makes the difference between them, that is just a, just a trivial claim, is that those who are informed, those have a PI hat, which is correlated to the actual outcome that will happen. And uninformed are uncorrelated. Okay. They have some.
Yes. So it's in that sense, it's the same. It's, I mean, in this model, we, we, you can always complicate things, but okay. So it's that simple, and of course, what do they do? Yeah? Okay, so what do they do? They all, so they all have this PI hat, and what they simply do is what you would expect, ex, uh, expect that, so their action is the following, if PI hat is above an ask price in the market, so if, if they say, sure, I'm, I'm happy to ask uh, to, to, to buy at this or above, then they will buy. And if the i hat is below b, then they will sell. Is it visible here? No. Okay, and otherwise do nothing. So, <coughs> so otherwise do nothing. So B, okay, B and A is the, will be these, uh, okay, it's not so, so B, the, B is the best bid, A is the best answer. So it's the price that, that, the, that the market maker is offering to sell at or to buy at. Is it okay? Or it's very unclear. Here. Yes. So. Each of them has an idea of what the price will be in the future. We just define informed who have an idea that is correlated at least, somewhat correlated to the actual outcome in the future. The informed knows about the uh, final price. Yes, and in practice what we'll do, we say that they know he knows it exactly, but he could also just know that price will go up. He doesn't know how much, so, and it's correlated, but not exactly. It's a general, but yeah, in practice to make life simple, we'll say for informed, it's the, he knows the, the final price. And for uninformed, it's uncorrelated. You, you, you think you have information, but it has nothing to do with the real world. I think that tomorrow a stock will go up, but it is, I don't have any real information on that. It's just... Okay, but they are like noise traders? Yeah, it's the same, exactly the same. Sorry for... Uh, it's, yeah, it's exactly the same. Sorry. Um, so okay, so 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 the question is, of course, as before. So how should this A and B be set by by the market maker to 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 to, on average, to not lose against the other? How to set A B uh, to not lose? Right, and okay, you, you can, uh, it's, the, the idea is the same as, as, as in the type of model before, that what he has to say is that, okay, the market maker will have to set the price at which he, um, the price at which he sells in the following way. So what he wants to say is that, okay, if people are wanting to buy, <coughs> so I should set my A in a way that, 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 that the expectation of the final price is the price at which I'm selling. So we should buy from me, and in a similar way, you want this. So the bid should be somehow the same. It's his information here, right? Very good. It was a test. Uh, okay, so 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 it's, it's it's the same type of game as as we had before. It's not 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 very different, but actually it gives a much uh, richer structure. So we have two prices here, right? He, he wants to set these two, and um, 
So okay, o okay. One, one obvious thing is that again in this type of model he doesn't have really information. The only information about about the final price that that the market maker has, has is what the flow is doing. If he knew what the price is, he would set. If he had the info, he would set the, the A and B equal to the final price, and and that's it. And then he, he doesn't lose. Um, and in general, okay, you can expect uh, here we don't write, but you expect A to be above, above B. So the fact that people are buying is a sign that price will go up. He, he he's moving in this way. It's, it need not be. You could have some adverse way of trading, but this is yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so these, these are coming, each of them come to me, <coughs> one to trade, one by one. So, so this P hat is the actual, in this moment, <coughs> I see what, uh, you come to me with your PI, and I have to decide at what price, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's somewhat repeated, so between, between time zero and F, anyone can time come trading. So I see each of you what you want, one by one when you come, but I don't know, of course, if you have information or not. <coughs> Yes, I'm changing A and B accordingly, yeah. But, uh, I mean, uh, but, but in practice, uh, we care about any moment. So given that there is a trade now, what do I do? This, this is the, there, there is someone who wants to trade now, what do I do, yeah. I modify A only if uh, <coughs> PI is larger than A, or I don't understand the definition yes. maybe. Yes, so, so well, the, the other price is a bit, irrelevant. if you want to me, if you come to me, you say you want to buy, we care about the price at which I will sell to you. We, you don't really care about the price at which I would buy for someone else. So it's, we are looking at only one side of, of the situation in, in any given moment. But you could. No, the P hat is the is, is there are these informed and noise traders who have this P, P hat, so each of them. Yes. So you come to me, you say, I want to buy for 100. So it's a general notation for all uh, of the traders. Yeah, yeah, so this is in any moment that the, the person who can, I could put some T um, for each moment, but yeah. And, and, and that average is made uh, according to a mysterious uh, probability. Yeah, so we will discuss the, 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 the distribution, of course. Uh, this itself, it cannot be solved. The, the, the market maker has to have some idea of, uh, about the world. And so what he has is, okay, he can, in general, he will have some, uh, um, has an idea about, uh, about the following, following distribution. Uh, Okay. Given the final price, what, 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 what? How should this PI look like? If if no one has information, you think that it will be some Gaussian around the the current price, etc. So we will we will look at an ex, explicitly well, an example for this. But the idea is so it's, it's the same as in Kai. He has an idea of this. So he, he he has seen the past. He knows how typically these distributions look like, and what he cares about is. Uh, is the opposite, so he cares about, uh, uh, well, to, 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 to get this A and B, what he cares about is, uh, is this distribution. Um, uh, right? If he has this, he can, he can, he can calculate this if he is good at calculating. So the idea is the same, I, uh, and these ideas are simple, so, so I mean, it's tedious to calculate, but it's okay. So, so of course, what we'll have to do is, to, is to, to determine this thing here, which means that he will have to write up some, some, some base rule, right? Uh, which, okay, we can, we can write up, which will be, so in practice, what we'll have to calculate will be this. Okay, uh, I'll write it up and then I will say what, what things are. <laughs> so this is uh, 
uh, I mean, ch ch check it at home. This is just, uh, I wrote a base, but I introduced something new, so, which is this Q0, which is his idea of, uh, uh, so, so we, had, we said that he has an idea about this thing here. So, so given the information, how, uh, how do people act? So essentially, the, 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 the behavior and the number of uninformed. And this is the, the prior that he has on, uh, on the distribution of, uh, of the information itself. Okay. Uh, uh, are this clear? Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, okay, it's, it's, yes. It's not readable, it's not clear. Okay, what I did here is simply write up this as, uh, how is, so sorry, what I did is a base. In theory, so this should be p hat uh, p f, which actually he has an idea about, uh, should it be this? Okay, and then, okay, pom, pom, pom. This is, of course, closed here. Okay, so, so <laughs> the ideas of all these models are, 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 are simple. It's, it might be hard to calculate, but so the idea is that, okay, he wants to set his price according to this. So from here, this, of course, once he has this distribution, he can set an A and a B in a way to, to not lose in the market, right? Of course, what we want to look at again is that given the different distributions, how will he behave? What is the intuition that one can get from a model like this? And uh, yes. so, so what uh, do we have to do is the following. So what we will have to, so, so this, this, this is known by, okay, and so what, what he will be, he, he will have to calculate is, will, will be something like this, so, so for example, A will be, well, the expectation that we have there, uh, Which will be okay. It will be an agreeing. Do, do I have to write it up? Is it okay? It's a, so, so what, what he has is that he has this uh, this distribution uh, here. And okay, I, I, I'll write it up for one of them only for a. So we'll have something like this. Fast, but uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. The price should go from zero to infinite, like to the negative values. Um, good, good point. Uh, yeah, so it's, okay. uh, it can be generalized, but you can rather think about it as is uh, compared to the price now. So, so negative is when the price is going uh, going down. But yeah, so yeah, you, you yeah, so you can come. You're right. Um, Uh, just a second, do you have to, not really, it's essentially, um, so the, the way you're working in actually, it's, okay, so what, what you're comparing yourself to is the price now. So if, if negative uh, uh, being that the price went down. So it's, you, you can change your, your, your uh, the center of your, um, how do you say this? Of your uh, frame, that your reference frame that you're working in. So let's, let's not change it. Of course, depending on the distribution you define it, it might be zero in some time, some places, so you integrate something which is zero. So I is it okay what I wrote up here? It's uh, ugly, the way I wrote, but... Uh, sorry, uh, I was thinking that PF is exactly the final price. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes. The PF is exactly the final price. Um, no, what I said, the change in the price is PF minus the price now. PF is the final price, but he doesn't know it, right? Okay. And uh, I, I don't want to go in much detail in this. So what I wrote up here is, is it clear? It's just an expectation. So I use so what we have above and below the difference is there is a PF here. Uh, I think it's okay. I hope. I don't know from the faces. So, but it's not really the calculation which is, I think, which is interesting in this, uh, but, but to come up with, with some, some ideas of, of what can this give. Okay, similarly, of course, you can write up uh, something for A and uh, for B. But, um, but what you can get is, uh, okay, le let's try to, 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 to see an actual example. So I, I hope it's uh, sort of clear up to now. It's, uh, uh, so, so let's say that, that, uh, that the trader knows the following thing, that the, 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 this, this, this distribution, so which we just discussed there. You can imagine that it's, uh, so to simplify life, we, we had these uninformed, informed, which are, some are correlated with the price, some not. You could have some model in the following way. I will say the notions in a second. So. Some new notion. I don't know where there are chalks here. So, so, so one can write up a given distribution. We can come up with some distribution. What do we have here? We have by five, we say that the ratio of people who are informed. And what we say is that exactly what, what, what was suggested that. They exactly know the final price. Their distribution is a, is a Dirac uh, around, around the final. They know perfectly. And then there will be all those who are uninformed, who will have some distribution that we, will, that we can define, some type of symmetric distribution around the, around the current price. OK? And we said nothing deep here. And that is a, is a Dirac. And f is a some symmetric function that we will define now. So what we say is that uninformed have a function that we will define in some way. Informed, whose rate is phi, is you know perfectly the future. Okay. And okay, no, no, you won't be happy with this. I'll, I'll give something for f and something for uh, uh, for q zero to to solve this problem. But to, to to get an idea of what a model, a simple something, what we will have is some some normal distributions. What you will get. But of course, one, one could write up any type of distribution for this f. You want it to be symmetric, because that's what it means that they are uninformed. So OK, uh, you won't be happy. You can change, say, I, I just write it up what I choose for f, but I won't do any calculation on this. You can, you can uh, choose it to be the following. And. Uh, So it's really not important. I mean, uh, don't don't uh, unless you love to do calculations. We simply say that for f here, we choose something which is decaying exponentially around uh, um, around this. So if we put this in the, 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 the stomach of it, with some with some um, how do you say it? Some um, Noise and so some uh, typical uh, deviations. So what's a good word for it? Some dispersion uh, of, of of the distribution. Okay, so so uh, this is what what the uninformed are doing. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 
uninformed don't have information. So what the, from, from a picture like this, what he says is that I know that it's only 10% of people who have any information. So my phi will be 0, 1. And in this example, he says, OK, but I know that these 10% have been known exactly, have been given the, 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 the solution or the, the final price. The 1 minus phi, so the 0, the 90% instead have, uh, well, in this case, uh, this, this distribution around, uh, around uh, P0. Of course not. No. So, I mean, th th these are very, very stylized models, which will give some intuition, and then we'll try. To, uh, I'll try to wrap up at the end of the lecture why we are looking at this, because I have the feeling that somehow people are lost a bit. But no. Wh but he, what you could say is that yes, yeah, sure, he's trading a lot. He might have an idea of, let's say, of phi. No, he gets an idea of how many people. If you trade a lot, maybe you know. I mean, if you're always losing, you understand that everyone is informed, and so he can get uh, in practice. He doesn't know the perfectly these distributions, but in his head he might know what is the base formula and what he has to write up. And uh, and okay, so this is what is the, the the dispersion of the uninformed. He can have an idea. So if the price is 100 now, he might from his practice know that people are okay to trade at 102 at 98, but not at 120 and 80. So he can have ideas. He won't know. No one tells him the distribution. Uh, are they not normalized? Uh, no, they are like that. Um, Excuse me. Two sigma. But but. Uh, ah, sorry, that's a sigma. Perfect. But uh, I mean. Uh, if you want to play around with uh, calculations, uh, I will give the solution what this gives, actually with a caveat. If you want to calculate, calculate, but it won't. I mean, sure, if you calculate in a model, it's always useful, but it's, I don't think it will be, it, it will be integrals of exponentials. It's, it's tough. Actually, I did it, and well, it's not tough. It's time consuming, but not tough at all. Uh, OK, so anyway, but the, the main thing is the idea, what, what we have here. Is, it, is that OK? And so, okay, I just say the solution to this because I want to discuss the, the, a bit the phase space of this problem. So, what uh, for the different things? So, so, what do we have here? There is a dispersion of the of the of the uninformed trades of the uninformed people, and we have a sigma, which is the dispersion of of, of the information. So, how much information there is in the market? Um, and so, okay, I, I, I write up the solution just to have something, not just to talk into the air, but. Uh, so the solution to this, if, if, if he does this formula and the similar formula for B, it will be the following. He will have an A. Well, this is just the definition. He will uh, so I'm just defining an S. He will define a current price minus a half spread. And, plus a half spread to, to put his prices, Not, nothing given here, but this S will be the following ugly thing. Something we, we don't really care. Uh, we want to look at it, its behavior. We, it's not really important what, what, what the final thing is. Actually, I have, there is a caveat in it, which is uh, which is anyone who is who loves to do integrals can test it. That uh, actually, uh, officially the solution is this, which is in white. I did the integral. I think there is a S divided by 2 in every place here. It doesn't change the behavior of the model. If you want to do the integral, do it and tell me what, what you find and, uh, and, and we'll compare. But OK, it's not really important. But, but, so what does this mean? In this case, so in this idealized case, if the market maker wants to, to break even, not lose consistently on the market, uh, he has to put his prices to current price plus half of this and minus this, minus half of this, OK? So, 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 
well, okay, we have a solution to this, but the, the, what we are more interested in is, okay, how does this, this stuff behave? Because, okay, it's ugly, this thing here, right? Uh, nobody knows what, what, what the behavior it will have, except me, because I did a numerical solution to this. So, okay, the numerical solution will be this. Okay, uh, believe me, so what I did. Uh, but it's, it's quite interesting to understand, try to understand. So what do we plot here is we, we set uh, phi and sigma to some levels. Okay, we, we set phi to zero one. So there are 10% of people who, are, who have information about the future and sigma is one, okay, it's something, a number. And so what we plot here is what, in this model, what the spread should be as a function of this W over sigma. So the F as a function of, of the dispersion of, of the, of the noise traders and the dispersion of the, um, uh, the, the information, right? So as you, go, as you go upwards, you have more and more noise. And as you go down, you have uh, less noise traders and more and more stronger information. Is it clear, Adam? Okay. And so actually, it's, I think it's quite interesting. It, it, it gives a quite good intuition about how a market can behave. Of course, these number, the exact numbers cannot be calculated in a real case. But so, so what do we see? Essentially, we see three regimes. Which will remind us of, of what the previous model actually said. So, so one case is, is that uh, when W is larger than sigma, okay? So we are here. And there is, so what do we see? That there is only one solution of this problem. There is one solution, but only one solution of this. There is only one spread. So, so, okay. Which will be, okay, uh, the, the, the value of the, this line. So, so S uh, for small phi, it will be just to, 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 to say, it will be something like uh, this. To, 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 to a first order, okay? Um, so what does this mean? That there is a regime here, which, which seems to be a well-behaving orderly regime. There is only one pro possible spread that, that the market maker can set, which will be this value, um, which actually we can, we, we can get an idea of what this would predict for a real market, because what does this mean? This means that, uh, Okay, so this means that if the spread in this regime, so in this well-behaving regime, there is no problem, this would mean that, okay, phi is equal to S over two sigma, or something like this, or, or, or order of this, would behave like that, which actually gives, a, we can get, we can check, so the, the, these are numbers in the market. So sigma, of course, will be, will be the, somehow the typical volatility of, of, the, of the price if it's, if it's the information. So it's how much you, people believe that prices can move so, and they are informed. So actually the, you can get for a real world the order of this would be let's say 10 to the minus 2 for a, for, on a daily level. Because of course sigma is something that, that the longer time you have it, it can sit. So say uh, if you put here our sigma daily. So it's, we should just, uh, okay, we don't have to believe in this model, but some intuitions of the model seem to be okay. We don't have anything against it. It would say that, so in, for a real world, uh, this would be quite low, meaning what is 10 to the minus two, it would mean that, okay, essentially 99% of people are, are, are trading randomly. And 1%, so if, if you believe in a model like this, then 1% would be the, 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 the roughly the ratio of informed people. So it, it gets a prediction. We, it's hard to test, so, but, uh, but that's what you get. Um, Sorry. Does the market maker know sigma, uh, phi? Sorry, no. The market maker doesn't know phi, but he can calculate the, uh, sorry, what does, uh, what does the market maker know about phi? Sorry, uh, you're right. Yeah, sorry, the market, yeah, so the market maker actually knows this, but he doesn't know the, uh, this. yeah, he knows this. Sorry, he knows phi. So he, from his past experience, he knows phi. Okay. So actually what he says is, if there are many, 
Yeah, okay, so, so essentially going into this limit is uh, if the dispersion of these, uh, these, um, these noise guys increases, uh, he knows how many there are, he's gaining. So, so what does this mean? Okay, going into this direction means that, that, um, that he keeps the spread at, at the level that he had, right? His solution is this. Increasing W means that the, the, the dispersion of these noise traders increases. If it's an enormous dispersion, they will be always trading, essentially. Right? They, they, it, so what happens is it's, it's really in this limit. He's making money all the time on these on this, uh, investors who do not have information. The other, solu the other case is, uh, is, let's say, OK, still, still hand, one can handle. So, uh, so where W is. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, is below sigma, so so you are below one here, but above some level, which uh, above some W star, which is some critical value of this, which will be what is here. It, it's hard to calculate; it's not really important, but it's a finite value. So in this between, you you have two solutions, um, which is okay. Seems to be strange. What does two solutions mean? That the market maker ha can ha set his spread to a low value or to some high value. And as he goes left, the two solutions converge, but there are two possibilities to do. Okay, so one can handle this still, because uh, you can say that, okay, if there is one market maker, of course, what he would do is probably set it somewhere up. But if you had competition between several of them, then, then it would be, the, the, the system would choose the lower solution. Because I mean, if you choose this one, someone will choose this, and, and, and you will be just not trading. And, um, and there is okay, and there is a and there is a third solution, well, a third situation where there is no solution. So, so when when uh, W is below this W star, which uh, has, has a numerical value in this model, then then there is no so there is no solution to this problem. There is well, you can call it breakdown of the market. So there is uh, no way for the market maker to set a spread and what we had here a bit, and not lose consistently on the market. So what does it mean? Um, well, going, going left here means that, that this W decreases. So, so the amount that you can, in practice, gain on the uninformed traders decreases. And there is a point where simply you, you cannot gain enough on the uninformed to, to, to make up for the loss that you lose on, the, on those who had information. And then you just get out of the market. You say, here, I'm only losing. Uh, so, so the message is that, that, well, it's the same type of message that we had in the other type of model, that, that for the market to work, so the market to function smoothly, you need to have uh, uninformed. You need to have noise traders in the market. Otherwise, it, well, OK, it, it seems to be actually a trivial claim if, at the end of it, of course. If everyone has perfect information, there is no, why would there be trading? But you can, you can prove it in some simple models with, with, with certain assumptions that it is the case. So, okay, let's write it out to be clear. So, so a functioning market is one where uh, there are enough somehow noise traders. Okay, so is, is the message of this type of model clear? I hope. Yes. 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 So, so here it's clear the three phases, right? The the, the, the first is this one. You have one solution. Here you have two. Here you have zero. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of Sigma and W, so this is only the, the ratio of Sigma and W that you look at here. So one means, well, we have some certain units. I mean, we, we gave distributions, and this lucky case, it is one, but of course, it could have some other value. Above this, above a certain value, there are so many people, uh, well, the, the, the stupidity of these noise traders, let's say, are so widely distributed. They are ready to take at prices so far from the price now without any underlying information, that, 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 that it's very easy to make money on them. You can set a spread which is relatively small, 
given by some factors because you 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 make up on the you make uh, a lot of money on these people you don't you are not hurt by those who have the information so those who are related to to sigma right so the, it's, it's the width of the distribution of the information and the and the noise essentially then there is a a regime in between when it's not the case anymore so you you as you go leftwards, okay, there are two solutions, but, but the, the low solution, so, so the low spread solution actually is increasing. So as you, as you uh, decrease the dispersion of these noise traders, you can gain less and less on them. So you have to start increasing your spread to make even because you're losing still in the, on, the, on the informed people. Of course, this could be, the reasoning can be in the other way. If sigma uh, increases, I mean, this is the same. It's, it's the ratio of the two that we care about. I don't think we have to discuss it more. So it starts to increase, and also you have two solutions in practice. <laughs> but I don't think that for practical reasons the two solution is that important because if I'm not alone to be in the market, then I will have to choose the lower one. So there, there will be a, a breaking of the symmetry. And then there is a region. So, so as you go left, there is a point where the upper and the lower part of this curve touch. And below that, it's simply impossible to, so below a given value, it's impossible to, to, to trade in the market because uh, the market maker is losing too much on, uh, on informed traders and gains too small amount on the noise traders. So it's more, it's, 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 this, is, this is the message that, an intuition about how markets should be working, how, how given information, how should the market work. Of course, everything here, so the actual numerical values depend on these distributions, and you could write up some strange distributions that have slightly different, but for meaningful distributions, so which, which makes some sense, so for example, F being symmetric, you have a type of behavior like this. Um, okay, so, so I wanted to say two things. One is uh, still about these noise traders, and then a bit uh, more wrapping up on this part. So, okay, it, it was obvious that, that uh, so th th these models that we discussed, this Kyle and Gloucester Milgram, are, uh, um, are a simplified version of a market, a simplified version of how information and, and non-informed traders can behave, but of course it's, it's overly simplified, so there are a lot of critics against this. We don't think that this is, nobody thinks that these are realistic models. Why, why would people, how, part of the people, so why would these people know very well something and these know nothing? So you would expect that it would be some distribution and so life should be much more complicated. One can handle it, just not analytically, but you can make more complicated models. Um, there is also the, okay, the, the, I think the main critique with, uh, okay, the, there is also another critique that we discussed before in the first type of model that if you assume that the market maker only cares about setting prices in a way not to lose consistently, but he doesn't, he's not afraid of having enormous positions of if you want to buy from him you know, on a good price, he says whatever quantity. So there are some non-realistic things. I don't think these are important. I think a serious issue about all these is that you, estimate, you, you, you approximate that there is a final price, this PF, which some people know. And the only thing that the market maker wants to do is, is, is to break even compared to this. So, okay, essentially, it's only this what he, he does. So he says that, okay, if I'm not selling to you below the, the, the final price, I'm happy. But of course, this, this, this assumes that at the final price, life is over, and, uh, and he can sell his own store. I mean, the, the market maker, if he, if he buys from you, let's say, a quantity of stocks, then he will have it in the pocket. And of course, there is a life after this. So, so what after PF happens, if he wants to sell it away because he wants to retire or he wants to get out of the market, it's not obvious that he can really get this, this price later. So it's, the fact that it's, it's a, on a very finite horizon is, is very realistic. We will try to see a uh, discussion of why this is the case. I don't know if this claim is sort of clear or not. Okay, so the point here is that the fact that it's this type of ex expectation that he solves means that the only thing that he cares about is to not um, sell you below the, the final, what is the, his expectation of the final price, right? It's something like this. But, uh, but this final price is not final in the sense it's not the end of the world. Then, then afterwards he will have to, uh, 
get out the news. So, so one, one situation could be that, okay, I have, I'm a market maker, I don't have anything in my pocket, I'm just buying from you, I buy from you 100, in a way that indeed uh, I do not lose because in the next time step price goes to PF. But then I have 100 in my pocket, I have to, what do I do with it? So if I, eventually I will have to sell it. <laughs> If I can sell it at PF, great, things work okay. But if by selling it, I will myself uh, behave like the informed and uninformed and, and, someone, and, and impact the price, then, then this doesn't work. So, so it's, this one step uh, game is, um, is, it can be misleading. It's a, it's a very simplified version. Is that okay? Sorry, can I ask something? Uh, they form the traders. Yeah. They know a number, PF, right? Yes. Uh, in this case, yeah. But uh, that number enters the model only, because, only in, in the fact that they all agree on that uh, number. Yes. So someone came and told them that the process will go there. I mean, it's unrealistic, uh, it's unrealistic but yeah. Okay. For some reason, they know. Yes. Of course, you can be more realistic that they know that it's going up by a certain amount, and then, then it's okay. You can imagine that people know this. Yeah, but they, they are making it move uh, to that direction, uh, asking to that, for that price. The only thing, the only point is that they all agree on a price. It's, uh, which, which, which the, which, which things, which the, where the price will move, where the market will move, but the, but, but the other side doesn't know this. So he wants to guess what this price is. The price will go there. Okay. And he wants to set the price in a way that, on average, he sets it indeed to the price. Uh, I mean, the market maker indeed to the price. Um, Okay, so I hope it will be clear. You, you, you can have some time to, to, to think about this. The, the main idea of this model, it's a bit more complicated for some things, but the, the main idea is uh, similar to what we have in, in a simplified model is to essentially you have an idea of the distributions. You want to, to optimize yourself uh, to, 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 to on average not lose and uh, not lose. <clears throat> so, okay, so, so this is... Uh, this is the second type of model like that, we will get a bit back to, to real markets instead of these models. I just wanted to make a bit clear, so I don't know, is it sort of clear for you where we are going? Because uh, the, what I'm afraid is that, that there are many things coming, so, so okay, I, that I want to clarify a bit. So, so what did we discuss up to now? This, we discussed, uh, okay, what the markets are, we discussed a lot about what, how prices behave, so there was all this question of what we call stylized facts, but I think the most important for us in this moment is this somehow diffusivity of prices is that that prices statistically seem to be unpredictable. Then we discussed correlations, which is uh, important, I think, on its own, uh, for its own sake, but we don't, I mean, correlation matrices we don't really use here. And so, so what, what, what is the next question after this? Okay, you see how the price moves. You, you want to understand what, what happens on the micro scale. So why is it moving in this way? How does go, price get diffusive and what is, I mean, you know that people who trade have some type of information. In practice, of course, uh, it's not information like this. But so, how? Wh what is the notion of information, and how the how can it get get built into prices? So, so this is somehow the idea you want to understand on the microstructure what lab, what happens, and uh, to which I think boils down to the question which we call market impact, but it can be different. That, okay, how are the actions, so, so the single trades of of people in the market, correlated to what the price is doing? A stylized modeling of this is that there is someone in the market who's, who decides on the actual price that, that, that you can pay, but doesn't have information. So how can he infer a proper price? So it's, it's, uh, it's him who impacts the price because he sees what you all are doing and decides where the price should go. So this is a t type of stylized model, okay? So it's, the idea is, okay, you, to have a notion of being informed and have a notion of how this information gets built into a price. And um, so, so this is the way that, that these economic model, economics models get, get, get some insight. And okay, we, we can see that, in fact, uh, we get some ideas how a market should work, what's in the, the notion of information, what's the importance of those who are not informed, all these things. And, um, and well, the next things which we didn't discuss, of course, it, I said, okay, this is what we call price impact. What I will try to discuss is that, is, is the more the mechanical. So here, <clears throat> there are many notions which, Makes sense, but it's hard to understand what is really information. How how does the market maker know 
who can be informed, who cannot be informed, so this phi, all these things, how can you guess? So where we are going from now, so that, that you don't have to yet know, of course, is, is more to get, well, we have to see a bit empirically how, how actually actions of traders change the price, so, so how, how in practice this works, but try to come up with more mechanical models to, to see, okay, given that a market maker or anyone who is providing liquidity cannot decide who, is, who has information and who doesn't have information, how in practice uh, prices, prices respond to, to actions. So somehow this is the, and then try to model this. So try to see empirically and try to get models about this. I don't know if it sort of makes sense, the, 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 the trajectory. <coughs> The others, how much they gained? Well, that he knows because he, he uh, yeah. So that he knows because he knows where the so he sees the price. He knows where the price was, at what the what the price what he traded and where the price went. So he can calculate. Of course, he doesn't know per single person what he won't know that you are someone who's always losing against me. So I'll be happy to. So he will know on an overall what happened. So he cannot point out. What he cannot learn is, yeah, this 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 guy. Haha, ha, let's. Uh, he doesn't know anything. Let's let's. Of of the price. Yeah, well, you you can write up. You can say that. Okay, but there in, there is a next step. Yeah. And he has to. So, so you can put constraints in the system, and and the fact that okay, let's say that he, the next step is that he he owns uh, the quantity. We don't have a queue here, but anyway, he owns the, the, the quantity that uh, that he bought in total. Let's say he bought. So that's the easier. He owns this quantity, and you can have a next step model. Okay, but he, uh, 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 right after he wants to get out of the market, and you can get you can make a model for this. Uh, so you can make several step models, but we won't. Yes, so pi f will be moving. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 not obvious, but you can you, you can do so. There is actually a dynamic version of this of this uh, of this model, but we don't discuss it here because I think so. For me, it's more to give a taste and to give uh, some intuitions of, of what's going on. I don't want to go into these. I don't think these models solve the world. Um, so okay, so so now I, I will try to get to 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 discussing a bit of of price impact. I think we don't we won't go extremely far. So what do you So what is uh, okay? So what is price impact? I mean, um, it will be more a general introduction because we'll have actually we will have uh, the next three courses. I think we'll be we'll be discussing uh, questions of price impact in general. So. I ah, know. Sorry. Okay. So the source. I actually I wanted to mention one thing before getting to the price impact. I will. Okay, sorry about this. So, so one more thing that I wanted to, to, to get uh, actually before the impact is, uh, is something which is, called actually, which is called liquidity paradox. And it's, uh, and it's related, it's still going back to this question that, 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 that we discussed yesterday. So this economics, economics concept of fundamental efficiency. So there is some underlying true price in the market, and, and then the price reflects this quite well. That's the definition. So, so one definition of, of, uh, of liquidity would be, well, we, have, we had several ways, but one definition could be that in a real market, given you trade a quantity, how much, how much, would, you, how much would you trade the, change the price? Right? If it, uh, it, it's a sort of definition. So again, we, we have, uh, OK. Uh, Okay, I, I, I do a stylized version of, of, of what we had before. So if you have a limit order book, you have some uh, volume in the market. 
So this is the ask bid. Okay, so, so this is what we had just uh, in another version. Um, what what a, 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 a one type of definition of liquidity could be that, okay, I want to go to the market, I want to buy a quantity Q, how much of this volume will I, will I, uh, will I consume? How much will I push the price? Okay. And uh, well, I think that's, that's clear. And one proxy for this could be, could be the quantity available at the first level. So you could say that, okay, you don't want to move the price, you just want to trade at the price, at the best price which is available. So you just want to say, okay, what is available there? I, that, 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 that's the idea, that's the version of liquidity, that's the measure of liquidity I care about. So let's say one definition, we'll have other definitions. Right? Like liquidity is a bit ill-defined, you can think in several, but one definition could be uh, what I will call you, call volume at the best level. So the best bit, okay? And I just wanted to give a few orders of magnitude to, to get an idea of do, do what, what we think of this, what we discuss, fundamental efficiency. So let's say you, the, the, the volume which is, uh, which is traded daily in the market is, um, is roughly, let's say, the following quantity of the, what, what I will call market capitalization. Market capitalization is simply the total value of this product available in the market. So it's, it's all the shares that are in the world times their price. It's, it's, it's just some overall value of the product. So essentially what you can see that any given day, if you look at all the trades in the market, it's around 0, 0.1 to 1% of this which is traded. And, um, and actually, if you look at what is, the, what is this value here, so these are absolutely empirical type of numbers, it's essentially 1% of daily volume. Okay? So just to get an order of magnitude, which means that, that, that okay, so, so you can multiply this, so this will be something like uh, 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 4 of, uh, of the market cap. Okay. And uh, well, th th these are simple numbers. I mean, uh, so yeah. Market yeah. Is the number of stocks, the total, number. total of number of stocks times their price. So it's in a it's a dollar value, but it could be total number of stocks. Yeah. So for Apple, I don't know. You did, did, so it's it's an open information. It's a typical valuation of a stock. Could be you can say okay, what's the total number of stocks in the world hold on Apple? It's, it's just to have a scale on, on things because, okay, if you're buying because you have an idea of what this market is going to do, of course, somehow you are related to this. You want to buy maybe 1% okay, of this. So that's big, but it's okay. So actually, this is what I want to say. So, so this means that if you want to, let's say, trade 1% uh, of, the, of the total value of a market, so uh, this could be somehow a version of total value, okay, of a, of a product. So let's say if you want to trade, trade one percent of the market capitalization, which is which is of course big for if you say that you want to trade one percent of Apple, it's big, but for a, a, a big fund, it's it's possible to trade one percent. It's it's not it's not outstandingly high. That means that for to do that, you you will be okay. You can calculate how many times. So each time you can trade this quantity, and to trade uh, one percent of this, what you will have to do is you will be trading for uh, you you will have to do like a. Okay, how many trades do you have to do? A hundred, uh, like ten to order of ten to the four trades, I think. I don't know if I calculated it. Uh, so, so for a large quantity, quantity to trade, you need to trade for a long time, right? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing uh, very trivial stuff here. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. So we are here. Yeah. So we are talking about one one given company which has this order book now, and I just say that compared to the total value of this company, the daily traded volume is uh, zero one to one percent of this this number. Okay. 
and actually at any given moment what you see available in the in the order book is another two orders of magnitude lower so it, it, this is a simple it's an empirical fact it's not uh, it's important no? but what is the message of this that if you want to say let let's say trade one percent or even zero one percent of a company of the total value which is okay for for an investment fund it's it's any day can happen you have you have you cannot do it in one trade you have to do a hundred, a thousand, uh, several thousand trades with these numbers. <laughs> Meaning that, okay, well, uh, on a given day, the order of number of trades on a day is, let's say, a thousand, a, a few thousand for a liquid product. So it means that at least for a day, or but typically for a couple of days, you have to trade. Since in each moment, uh, unless you want to, to push the price by a lot, if you only want to trade what is available in the, the given moment, you, are, you have to trade for long times. Okay, it's, it's a simple game, but, but it has, a, I think, a big consequence. So, so there is this idea that prices are somehow in a, con contain uh, the information of what people want to do, they, they, this, this type of efficiency, but it cannot be the case. So if, if no one is really showing exactly what he wants to do, showing his information, what, how much he wants to trade, because he has to cut this up. So I know I want to buy 1%, but I will be doing throughout 10 days uh, in small amounts to buy this. That it means that prices cannot reflect the information that I have, right? If I'm, if it's not in there, so, so you cannot say that supply, this supply and demand curves will have all information, but because people have to somehow hide their their true intentions because of uh, because not enough um, liquidity available in, in in the in the order book at any given moment. I don't know if this is a it's a simple claim, but I so. So at best, this type of equilibrium can, can make sense on some longer scale. So let's say if you want to trade 1%, one can write up these numbers. And then maybe you will, you will be trading for 5 to 10 days. Uh, of course, you cannot take, do all the trades in the market in, throughout the day. So you have to be somehow you have to hide yourself among others. You'll be trading for several days. It means that it, it may be on these several days there is somehow your information gets incorporated into the price. But any given moment, uh, nobody knows what, 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 what your intentions are. Uh, to really buy, and and this brings up to brings us to to, to the fact that actually, if you look at the, the the flow in the market, so 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 the 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 number of trades and number of buy, uh, number of buys and number of sells in the market in time, there is a very very long range persistence, which will be most probably due to this fact that people are doing the same for a long time. So. So what I want to show you is, is that as an as a, as a, as a answer to this, so the liquidity paradox is that, that because of low liquidity available in the market, you cannot have all information at any given moment available built into the price. So what I want to discuss is uh, persistence. Of the order flow. So order flow, we will define, we will simplify our life. Order flow is all the trades and the orders coming. What we will simply do is decide that this is simply the, the, the sign of trade at time t, OK? We look at the, 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 the time series of all the trades, and we only care about their sign. So we'll call this epsilon t, which will be plus minus one, plus one if there is some, if the initiator of the trade is buying, so the market order is a buying trade, minus one if it's selling. So it's, we really simplified, we, we throw away a lot of information. And okay, we, we want to look at the correlation of this, so, so what do we want to check? We want to look in time for a given product, so we, are, we, 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 we think about one product and we want to look at the autocorrelation of this thing. as usual. Okay, so this is it's, it's, it's the autocorrelation of this product that we that we want to look at, okay? And um, and what you get is the following curve. 
So what uh, you see on this is that it's also correlated. So, uh, okay, so, so what we can say about this, uh, I will have a question in a second, but, but what you find is, uh, I'll put this here. Is, uh, is that it's somehow a, a correlation in the following way. You can, you can write it up something like this. You put some constant times some Parlowish behavior. So, so time scale to the minus gamma in this case. So can you, can you tell me what is gamma? I think it's, uh, it's important to be able to read figures. It's, it's, it's on the figure. Hmm? So how much is it? Yes? So what is divided by what? No, it's, it's a good approach. Okay, so, so uh, uh, the, the, the approach is good. I didn't develop so, so how much is the exponent? Log of 0.1 doesn't exist. No. So, 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 so the right answer is uh, one half. So, I mean, gamma is one half, so it's minus one half the, the exponent. So how do you read this? It's uh, exactly, uh, it, it's important. I think that this is a basic thing development. You, you already had this, right? you, you knew the solution. It's a, you didn't come up with the solution now. You knew how to look at power loss exponents before. You're poor, but it's still a good correlation. Anyway, so how do you look at this? So what you do is, uh, is take the logarithm of, of this. So take the log of this. And the log of this, what you will have is something like uh, log of C is uh, log of uh, tau, and you will have a gamma, uh, one over gamma here. You will have a gamma, how is it? A minus gamma here, uh, which will be a one over. So what you do is simply do a log against log. So what you see exactly as he said is that here you can see that you go down essentially, go down one order of magnitude, magnitude here, and here you moved roughly two. Okay? So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's good to be able to read these type of things. Are we, are we okay with that? I mean, I think it will happen. I mean, if, if, you, uh, if you do some statistical physics, you, you will often look at power laws and... Uh, so this will be something, uh, gamma will be something like 0, 0,5. Um, is it okay? Okay, so it, it, it's a good approximation. It, it's, it, for a statistician, it's not a good way. Of course, it, it's not a proof. The fact that it seems linear on a, on a log log, it's not a real proof of Paolo, but you can see that it's a very slow decay, yes. Sorry? Well, what's happening here? Well, uh, some finite, uh, finite size effect can happen. So what happens here is, uh, is actually I measured this on intraday periods. So what you do, what are you doing? You, you're looking at the sign of trades. You're looking at the autocorrelation. So we understand what the, the quantity is. And, uh, and as you get, so, so since we have, uh, in, for this product which I've measured, you have order of few thousand trades in a day. Here you start to get in a noisy, but actually you, uh, you, you can do this. So if, you, if you put more data together, you can, you can go further away. Okay, but so, so what does this mean? So you, 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 the, the parallel continues just here on the, visually on this figure, we didn't, uh, it's become noisy. So, uh, so what does this of, of course mean? So okay, it's, it's long range connection. What does it mean that if I'm buying now, or sorry, if I see a buy trade now, I can predict the sign of the trade a long time from now, which is, okay, I think, surprising in the first approximation, if you have all these numbers. So, 
okay, one can, uh, okay, well, what, what one can do is that actually the, the C tau can be, of course, written in the following way as well. Uh, what is the expectation of, of the sign at uh, tau from now, given that now, let's say, I see uh, plus one. Okay, so it, 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 this can be written as a conditional expectation. And so if you could, so, so, so this gamma is order one half, and this is, uh, let's say, similar order to one half. So, so at, uh, at leg one, let's say you're, you're, um, you're close to this. Um, what this means that actually if you, if you calculate the, this expectation here is that even, let's say, what did I wrote it up, which mean, this means that, that even, uh, let's say, C tau, e, tau equals 10 to the 4, so 10,000 trades from now, you can, uh, this will be, let's say, something quite low, but a non-zero. So you will have a, so, okay, the way to read this is, it's just I put numbers in the, in the equation, it's simple. The excess probability, so given that I saw a buy now, the excess probability of seeing a buy versus a sell 10,000 trades from now. So in this scale, it's almost a 10 days or a week from now. is still one, half a percent. Okay? So it's, it's, it's a very strong predictability that usually you don't expect in, 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 any, in, in financial theory. But do, do, do these two quantities are equal? Yeah, it should be. So uh, uh, epsilon uh, is plus minus one, and you can write up. Uh, oh, okay. So if, of course, if you forget this, but this is so. This is actually I wrote it like this, but this is on any. If you have enough data, this is close to zero. The number of buys and sales on overall it should be the same. Because I think that the, the first expression says that if I say um, a variation in time t, I can see. So I, I, I think this can be written, but it's okay. So it's a correlation between fluctuations. But no, no, epsilon t and uh, epsilon, uh, this is, uh, plus, actually, this is a plus minus one. You have a process of plus minus one on which I you can look at the. I'm thinking about the ICMO because it's the same. So it's, uh, it's similar, yeah. Uh, okay, I think this is the, these two are the same. Okay. If I didn't write up, uh, you can look at it later. But anyway, so. Even, even forgetting the numerical value for here, for instance, what you see is that, okay, so you have an autocorrelation which is super long range, which means that you have a predictability which is super long range, and you can quantify it, it's over several days. Uh, okay, so this is, j j just to recall that this is, uh, that this is uh, what, what we see here, so, so this gamma is uh, one half is, uh, Something that we discussed, so just to, 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 to go back to this, means that, that, uh, that it's a long memory process. So, so what it means that, uh, uh, well, in general, if you have some autocorrelation, which is, uh, which is let's, uh, I won't be very, very clean here, but it's k to the minus alpha with, uh, uh, with alpha in uh, between 0 and 1. This is what you call long memory. Officially, and then so, which means that 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 the integrated process, of course, will be will be will be super diffusive. Okay, so if you if you look at the, the variance of of uh, so let's say in general for a process X, if this is the case, then the the, the, the this guy here. Okay, like that, and uh, I mean, it is, it's, you can write up as the Hertz exponent, but what it means, okay, if it's positively correlated, will be a, will be a super diffusive integra integrated process. So it's just, just to recall what, 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 we, what we discussed before. So I wanted to discuss a bit the possible causes of this. So what, what, why is it the case that if you look at the market for 10 days or for any time scale, because it's parallel, you have a very strong directionality of the trades? 
which, which, uh, which somehow seems to contradict several things that, that is good. So you have, uh, okay, so this I just put here as a reminder. But so there are two explanations typically, I mean, it's trivial to say that there are two explanations typically to what is here. You can say that That, that there are some correlations in time because one person is doing something for a long time. Let's say that it's in our language we'll call order splitting. Okay? Which means that somebody wants to do, as I did, it's exactly the example that I did before, you want to trade 1% of the total value of a, of a product, and, uh, but you cannot do it in one trade. You have to slice, split it up into several trades. And for a week, you are always there. And every three minutes, you do a trade. OK, so, so, so this is one type of, of, process, one type of uh, underlying process that can, uh, that can uh, define it. And the other could be something, of course, some type of herding between actors, between Traders. So it's, 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 it's trivial what I'm writing here up. So if there is a, an autocorrelation in the process, which is, gov which is uh, uh, due to the actions, so, so the, the overall process is the actions of several people. It can be, the correlation can be due to single people being autocorrelated with themselves or people being correlated to each other, which we will call herding. So I mean, the first means, as I said, you have something big to do, and, every, and for a long time you're doing the same uh, buying, 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 buying in the market, and you could generate autocorrelation. Herding could be that I buy, and you guys look at me, and you also start buying because you say, yeah, maybe. So you can see the, the, the sign of trades in the market, you can see. So it could be a strategy that you try to do what others do. I don't think probably it's not a good way. It's, it's, not, it's not that others know very well. but. Okay, it's trivial. So another correlation could be that that it's uh, that between uh, between different people. And okay, so I set an example for this so herding. Of course, I won't go into details of this. There are enormous amount of models here. Uh, it could be some direct herding. So so you see others do something and you do that. But it, actually, in a, it could be also a, a common field that that people are following. So it could be a common news. Everyone is using reading the same newspaper. They are following that. So it's, it's an, it could be an indirect herding. Or, or some people have. I mean, the, the correlation for the correlation, it's enough. I mean, it's all that everyone has to be like this. But if there is a non-negligible percentage of the market who are who are behaving like this, then that's that's the case. And uh, okay, so so I, I'll, 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 I'll try not to go to extreme amount of details here. Is uh, is of course this can be this can be. If you have information of, of, of who is doing what, this can be decided. So, so to do this, actually, you need, uh, need information on the people. Info on who is trading when. OK. Uh, and if you have this information, you can, you can decide on this. I don't want to go extremely deep into this because uh, we are a bit behind schedule, I think. But so what you can say is that this type of information can be obtained. So you can get the type of information in, in the following way. You can say that I will write up and then I'll explain. So you can define the following variables is uh, And define some type of time series in which you have an extra index, which is I call I here, which is the person who is uh, trading or the entity who is trading in the market. Okay, you can obtain it's, it's hard to obtain this data, but it's actually for academic research you can you can get this type of data. And so you redefine. So we have this epsilon here, which is the sign of the trade. And now you say, okay, let's say epsilon t of uh, t i is non-zero if it actually was trader i. If trade 
Okay, so if trader, sorry, trader i. So if it was, was this person, I'm looking at a given person, so this will be plus or minus one if it was him acting in this moment at time t. And it will be zero otherwise if it's someone else, okay? And, and, and what, of course, in this representation, you want this to be something which we call event time, so from a continuous time to go to a time that only in the moment that something happens that when your clock moves. He didn't do anything, but since we are in even time, someone else will be doing something because otherwise the time wouldn't uh, tick. So it's, a, of course, the sign of this here is if you both are sold and uh, at any given moment only one epsilon, so, so, so one actor can, can, can be active in any given moment. So it's, so it's, it's, it's a simple writing up with which, okay, if you have this definition, you can write up well, it's in a trivial way the, the previous correlation in the following way. So em the empirical version of that with this new information can be written like this. Okay, what I did is simply, okay, I have a new variable in the system, which is I. Uh, so the correlation will be, can be rewritten as a double sum. So still we are summing on T, okay. This is the number of trades. Uh, actually, I could put T here, sorry. So, so it's, it's the number of trades all, all over and you sum on, on, on each actor. It's simple. And actually, okay, for simplicity, I will remove this here. Let's, let's forget it. On average, this is, uh, this is, this is very small, close to zero. So if you have a long data, there is no one who is for years buying. He would own too much. So sometimes he's selling. On average, it, 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 uh, it becomes zero. So this is the type of correlation that we have. So you can already see in a, in a trivial manner that, OK, what do you care here about splitting and herding? Well, splitting will be the cases when i equals j. Right? So it's the same actor at t and t plus tau. And herding will be when i is different from j. And what is t over there? So t is the number, it's, it's the normalization of this. So, so, so. Number of trades overall. So it's your, your normalizing. It's, it's simply, before the sum is on the i and j, it's simply this can be written up as. Uh, In, uh, in an, for your empirical data. Sorry, it's, it's n is t. Sorry, it's, it's the same. It's, it's the same normalization. We are not doing. Uh, and so, okay, your goal here is to to write up somehow this ct the following way. So you want to do is. Actually, I'll come here because it will not be visible there. So, so actually, what you can write up is well, you can. You can what, what your goal is that you have the total correlation that you had before. What you would like is to somehow decompose into into a part coming from splitting and amicron herding. So let's say some definite we will try to define these things. Okay. And so the way that one can define is the following. Uh, you can say you, you for for this you can you can try to look at define it in the following manner. Uh, C split will be I, I write it up and then I will define it, okay? Yeah, okay. I have to, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Sorry. 
for this. So, so, so one thing that, that, that one needs to define just, just, uh, just for simplicity, you can then, in a similar manner, for define the following correlation, which is between i and j. It's, it's conditioned on a given i and j. You define it like this, 1 over uh, uh, OK, minus. Uh, Minus the average of them. This, this is just the. Uh, you, you will probably see it in the slides, and, but you can write it up. So, what I'm simply doing here is okay, taking this. Uh, so, I have this epsilon i, epsilon j. I can define the correlation, the sample autocorrelation for i and for people i and j in a similar manner. It's, I mean, I, I did nothing here. What I have to define, of course, is this will be the. will be the number of times. Uh, that 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 uh, that J acts uh, tau time after after I. So it's, it, these equations are ugly, but they are really super simple. So what, what this means is that how many times does it happen that these two people act tau time apart? It's just the, the number of non-zero elements that you will have here. So you have to normalize with that. Okay. Are you following me? Sort of. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try to finish up fast. Uh, so, so if you have this definition here, I, I write up the claim and then I show the result. So you can uh, have the following. You can define this thing here in the following manner. So let's let's simplify life. It will be just like this. Okay. So what I do? Why I? Okay. There, there are things that I have to define here. Uh, So what is PII will be, okay, so PIJ will be TIJ over T. So this thing, okay, it's, it's, the, it's not the number of cases that they, they, they are active tau times apart, but the probability, so number divided by number of points in total, okay, so that, that's simple. And so you can write up the, so what we said, the total correlation you want to write up as a something coming from splitting, something coming from herding. And you can do, some, do this. Why it's not an exact equality? Because there is all these averages that remain. So, so I, 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 I assume that the average of the processes is not, not relevant and it's, it's really just the, 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 the correlation term, okay? Sort of. Um, so what is actually important from this, uh, to, uh, we'll see what these results give, but actually what you get is that, okay, so the, 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 the terms in the correlation, I mean, that, that which gives an insight, you will have a term which is not related to your sign, it's just the number of times that you, you act together, so somehow correlation of activity. Right? Is it okay, what I'm saying? Okay, you, you'll ask after. If you don't ask, I don't know if it's okay. I assume it's okay. And so there will be a CIJ, which is, which is the correlation of signs. Okay, so, so this is just an insight that actually a, a, a correlation will be, will be the, will, will be somehow the product of being active at the same time and doing really the same, going in the same direction. So there it, it will be somehow um, the, the, the product of these. And okay, so, so I, I won't go much into this. I mean, th these are, it's, it's just algebra writing up. It's nothing, it's just sums and uh, products. So 
But, but if you have questions, you can come. And of course, I don't know. I mean, there is a tutorial. So maybe if things are, I'm not sure if this is needed. If things are needed to, to write up these calculations properly, it's going to be done at the tutorial. I, I, you have to tell me if, if you need it or not. Uh, but OK, let's, let's get the result, what they give. So actually, what I plot here is exactly this splitting and herding component of, uh, of the total autocorrelation. Sorry. So the red and the blue curve here sums to the black curve that we had before, before. Believe me, just here we are on a log log. Here we are on a linear log scale. And so what do you see is that, uh, well, it's a, it seems to be a clear result that, that the red one is way above the blue one for, for the time scales that we care about here. So for up to a day, then you get into a noisy period. So what you see is that, and, and OK, we have some definitions of error bars. And we can see that the difference is outside the error bar. So you can see is that. For short times, you have some, t some herding between, between different members of the market. Well, let's say up to uh, 10 trades in this case. Then actually, it seems to be somehow negatively correlated. It might be spurious or not. I won't discuss it here. And, but the, the term which is about splitting is way stronger for all scales. So indeed, what, what governs this uh, long memory of autocorrelation is, is people doing the same for, for, for enormous amount of times. So it was not just a, an order of magnitude estimation that I gave, OK, if you want to trade a, a realistic quantity, how much time you, uh, you have to, um, how much time you have to spend uh, trading this. But it's, so it's, uh, it, it can be quantitatively seen that, indeed, uh, the, the, it's the splitting part that dominates. So OK, so I think we should stop. Sorry. I wanted to give so one. This, yeah? Yeah, so, yeah, okay, so, the, 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 yeah, the correlation between us on average. Of, I mean, here are, I don't know, 100 hectares. I will give a sort of exercise still, so, <laughs> or something to read, so maybe some people are leaving. Uh, so, yeah, so what it means is that, yeah, the, the, okay, for, for very short scales, they are comparable, even if it's much lower. But overall, what you can say, yes, so the correlation between, uh, between different people is much weaker than, 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 than the autocorrelation. Okay, so the, the then the other correlation coming, sorry, from the same people. Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the important information about the correlation is on my side. Yeah. So the the, the long the, the long memory behavior of this is due to this. Yeah. So it, uh, it's 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 people. Uh, yeah. Which kind of information carry on? That 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 this extremely long per, long range persistent of the order uh, flow okay. is because people are doing things for long. The same thing for long times, okay. so which is interesting for its own sake, and it will be interesting for the next thing. For example, if everyone is super autocorrelated, you're doing all the same, all things, the thing at the same time. How can price be non-predictable at the end? Yeah, okay. If I know what you guys will be doing tomorrow, how can it be non-predictable? Okay. So th this will be the main question, of course. And also, okay, so in the more philosophical level, okay, so if if people are doing the same for on a long scale, it means that at any given moment. The price cannot contain the information that you will that you already know that you will be trading all the time. The price cannot know this. Okay, thank you. So okay, I wanted to give a paper to to read and to uh, I, I write it up and then because uh, I didn't give much exercise I think compared to others no. So now I'll give. <laughs> so no, I, I wanted to give a paper which uh, which I think gives a quite good insight in uh, in this. It's a nice paper. I'll just write it up here. So the idea there is to to come to 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 connect this uh, the, this long memory in the in the order flow. But we said that okay, most probably it's due to people wanting to trade a lot. So the idea is to to, to connect uh, the, the 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 autocorrelation of the order flow to the distribution of of the size of trades. So if uh, if people have enormous trades that you want that they want to do on long scales. That will have an effect on the correlation. And what's the relation between the distribution of the two? So there is a nice paper on this, uh, which is the following. So it's by Lillo, Mike, and Farmer. And, uh, and it is in, is there access to Pizra V here at, at ICTP? How does it work? Um, OK. Uh, OK, uh, I can send actually to you. So if Fizra V, so it's 
from 2005. And uh, I don't have the title here, but so it's on the archive as well, one can find. I, I can send you the title, I can send you the PDF if you want. So, so the idea here is that uh, if, okay, we will call, uh, I give a new notion and then I stop. So normally single orders, one calls orders or trades and you we call meta orders all of these decisions that, that last for a long time. So the real thing that you want to, 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 to do, sorry, we'll get back to this. You don't have to read it for tomorrow. So what it says that, that uh, it's the distribution of uh, sizes of decisions to trade or to buy or sell, which we call meta order, and relation to to the autocorrelation that we just discussed. So my goal here, okay, so there is no, no real exercise to do here. I think it's useful to read the paper. Not, maybe not all of them, so actually it contains two models and there is a simpler model which is, uh, I think they call fixed N model, but also the other one is interesting. But, so it just goes through the calculations if things are clear and maybe uh, the, not today's tutorial, but the other one the, uh, you can discuss about this. It, uh, okay, it, it's a very simple model with quite simple calculations, but I think it gives some good insights to, and it's a good way to understand. I mean, someone else explaining things that I explained, it's always good to, to have others as well. Okay, so that's it. Good.